All right, next up we've got Felipe Amaya. Hello, Felipe. Hello, thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am a visual person and a movie fan who's also extremely curious. Uh, being visual made me go into studying graphic design as my bachelor's. Later on, I dove into CG in part because of my love for movies, but my curiosity made me go into the more technical side of it to explore proceduralism, scripting, and dynamics. Um, currently, I am enrolled as a graduate student at the Savannah College of Art and Design, pursuing an MFA degree in visual effects. Excellent. So what's today's presentation going to be about? Today's presentation is an overview of the work I contributed to a collaborative academic project under the mentorship of the Mill New York. Um, my role was to provide effects to part of a mock car commercial that was designed to emulate a uh, real production in advertising. Fantastic. Well, let's get started. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Felipe Amaya. I am a graphic designer and a visual effects artist focused on procedural and dynamic effects. Currently, I am also a graduate student at the Savannah College of Art and Design pursuing an MFA degree in VFX. Today, I would like to share with you a very interesting academic project in which I had the opportunity to participate. This project was collaborative and mentored by The Mill New York with the goal of simulating a car commercial production. Let me start by showing you the final result. Now, let me talk to you about my main contribution to the project, the effects on the road of the second shot. Let's start by talking about the asphalt fracturing. For this I took one of our many asphalt cracking references and traced it in Illustrator. After that, I took the vector graphic, brought it into Houdini and used it to cut the pieces out of the road geometry using a boolean fracture. Then used an RBD interior detail sub to make the sides of the pieces irregular and proceeded to pack them. After that, I created some groups to exclude certain pieces out of the simulation, like for example, the ones under the car. By using VEX, I randomly assigned an active attribute over time to the pieces. I did some initial tests in which I set up an RBD simulation where I used a force field top connected to the rigid body solver to exert a force onto a temp road geometry. This node read a conical tube from SUPS which had a custom velocity on its points perpendicular to its surface. This velocity was possible to achieve by projecting the polygonal cone geometry onto a primitive in the position you want the vector to be pointing at. In this case, I used its top face. Then, by using a wrangle, you can subtract the resulting position from the original one. This subtraction gives you the desired vector. The problem with this setup was that it proved to be too difficult to art direct, especially when I went further on with it and it became virtually uncontrollable. This made me discard this system and propose a different solution. The successful answer to the tractor being pulling the road pieces up was a custom approach using VEX with no physical simulations involved. The pieces are fed into a solver where they get animated. Within the solver, a wrangle picks up the pieces with an active attribute of 1 and starts moving them. For their displacement, I add a small increment to the position of an active piece each frame, but the increment is multiplied by a custom speed ramp. Once a piece is lifted up, they start to rotate randomly on each axis over time. This rotation is achieved by using a matrix to modify the pre-intrinsic transformations. The benefit of this system is that I had control over the overall speed, acceleration, spin, and lift direction of the movement. Again, all procedurally, without physics involved. Once the result of the asphalt movement was approved, I proceeded to the next stage of the effect on this shot, the debris from the asphalt. For this, I unpacked the animated pieces to be able to use a debris or sop to obtain points from where the pieces tore off of the ground. These points were then used to feed a particle simulation. Custom masses, velocities, and orientations were set up through the use of VEX in pop wrangles. This allowed to control the overall look of the simulation. 
Leftover pebbles from shot 1 were recycled to act as debris. They were copied onto the resulting particles of the simulation, selling the illusion of being chunks falling off of the sides of the asphalt pieces. To give them variation in size, before copying them, the p-scale attribute was randomized, but their orientation was assigned from the resulting orient attribute out of the simulation. The next step was to complement the asphalt pieces and debris with some dust. Once again, there were some initial tests that, unfortunately, had to be discarded. I explored going with Pyro for this. The sparse nature of the asphalt being lifted made me try to explore the, at the time, newly released sparse solver, but its novelty combined with my inexperience made it too hard to control. I was able to generate good looking results, but iterating through versions was a bit difficult with my setup. That, plus time and hardware constraints, made me go once more with a different solution. For this new dust system, I reused the resulting points from the previous The Resource SOP. I used Point Jitter and Point Replicate to multiply their numbers and expand their positions. From these, I fed three separate pop seams with different seats which later were combined. Looking back, I think I could just have done one pop seam and dealt with the variation at sub-level altering the source. But somehow, this seemed like a good idea at the time. These sims generated around 3 million flying points. I took these points and converted them into VDBs to make volume clouds. And then, to polish their look, I did a bit of smoothing and finessing to them. I used VDB Smooth to soften them, and Volume Mix to reduce their density. The last step was similar to the previous one. An additional dust sim to add continuity between the first shot and the second. For that, I took a rectangular grid, placed it at the car's position, and jittered its points in X and Z. To these points, I scattered circles of even more scattered points. These then became the emitters of another particle simulation that would act as the continuity dust. I ran the simulation for some frames, and then saved its state at an arbitrary but appropriate looking frame to run it from an advanced state and not from scratch, since, again, these clouds would bridge the action of the two shots. Once more, I took the resulting points and converted them to VDBs made them softer using VDB Smooth and adjusted their density using Volume Mix. Once all the effects were approved, I passed them on to be looked developed, lit and rendered. That concluded my work on this project. Let me show you the final result once more. A big shout out to my teammates, Sarah Van Alstein, Bradley Sakaguchi, and Elisa Hauser. This wouldn't have been possible without them. Lastly, my gratitude to our two SCAD professors involved in the project, Professor Deborah Fowler and Professor Bridget Gaynor. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or comments regarding this project. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and goodbye.